Steve. So then you're playing what you're doing. You're probably just doing that. Keeping clear. Keeping clear. Striking. Do that. And I, I, I think that's better. Hey YouTube, Cindy Steve back with another video, let you know uh, how my weekend at Revival went. I say weekend, I could only make the Saturday, um, it was my little girl's first birthday as well as obviously Father's Day on a Sunday, so I could only do the Saturday but what a day, it was absolutely brilliant, um, went far too quick, I was like a little kid at Christmas in the morning, I, I woke up at about 4 o'clock, couldn't really sleep and thought, right, I'm just gonna get up, get out. I mean, I'd, I'd really planned to sort of get there for about nine, so I was gonna be leaving mine about, I don't know, between about six, half six. But as I say, I was I was literally awake, like ping, at like half four. So yeah, got fresh, and I, I think I left the house about nearly half five, and got there about five past nine. And so about, uh, sorry, five past eight. I'm about two and a half hours away, just over. And uh, yeah, got in there nice and early. I know, um, quite a lot of the, uh, the people that supply the arcade cabs anyway. And I spoke to my good mate Roger, he said, yeah, if, if you get here early, you can always give a hand. And I was like, yeah, don't, don't mind now at all. Have a little look at the uh, traders nice and early, see what they've got. And uh, yeah, so yeah, about five past eight got in there, um, like a few of the others. Um, I say went straight to Roger's, I also needed a hand, but not really much was going on. Um, obviously spoke to Nintendo Arcade, quite, he was there quite er nice and early. Had, uh, had his Sky Skipper and uh, Rescue Cabs there. But they do, do such a great job. I mean, Craig Turner deserves a, a, a massive thanks because he's, he's been he's put it on for quite a few years now. Um, I keep hearing rumours they might not be there next year, which would be absolutely gutted if, gutted if it's not. Cause it's, for me, it is literally the best best event of the year. Um, obviously, because I, I know a lot of the arcade lot as well as like the YouTube a lot. And I think where it's like literally in the centre of the country, it's sort of... It's sort of two and a half, three hours sort of for everyone, rather than a lot of the events up north where it's could be sort of five or six hours for us guys down here. So uh, yeah, absolutely top event. So um, obviously I'll, I will be naming names as I go along. I'll be, I'll be, I say if I if I miss anyone out, I really apologise because literally with all the arcade lot and the YouTubers lot, I reckon I've probably spoke to about over over probably fifty people there. It was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, when I got there, like I say, I know Tootie UK was there nice and early, as you'd expect. Um, Cybersnake J was there nice and early, it was good, good to have a good catch up with him. Um, I mean, I spoke to him throughout the day as well. Um, who else was there when I got there? Obviously Nintendo Arcade does a great job supplying cabs. Smarty Martin, um, he was there, he had his little, uh, his little Dino King asteroids, but gutting that the, uh, the board wasn't working. Um, but he had a lot of uh, a lot of sort of golden age games there. Um, obviously, Chris Parsons spoke to him quite early with absolutely amazing Vectrex collection. Um, really envious, actually. I mean, I think he's got about eight Vectrexes. Um, he's, he's got everything for the Vectrex, literally everything like the 3D spinner or imager, um, like all the homebrew games. That, that the amazing arcade stick that I think there was only about 12 made back in the uh, sort of mid noughties I think. Brilliant, brilliant arcade stick that, all personalised. Um, who else was there? Obviously Roger with his uh, his ice cold beer and uh, he bought a little um, Tiger Heli uh, jammer cab. Lo lovely little cabaret. So yeah, loads of people bringing cabs that um, I, I, I know quite well. And uh, as I say, loads of YouTubers as well. So. Um, I'd say, got there early, looked at the traders. Um, I think I was giving one of them the ump because he was literally uh, taking everything out and I, I spotted some Amiga games quite early and I really wanted to sort of get, get dug in, see, see what he had. And he sort of said, oh, I haven't really got anything priced up yet, which um, I, I don't really like all that, I must admit. I, it happens quite often, like, like retro gaming shops and stuff like that, where they haven't got a clue about some of the 18 and 16 bit computers, Amiga especially, and uh, you pick something out that, that, that you want and the first thing they want to do is go straight on the eBay. And uh, yeah, not impressed with that. But luckily I did get some bargains. Um, so yeah, the first one I went to, as I say, it weren't really entertaining me at first, but then as soon as half nine came, 
people started sort of filtering in. I was, I was straight on there. I knew he had quite a few Amiga games there, but um, some of them quite expensive. But I tried my luck with uh, this first one, which it won't actually be a keeper. I will just, uh, I will just ping it on eBay or if, if, if any, any other Amiga tubers or anyone that's interested, I'll give them a good deal on it. But it was a um, big box New Zealand story, which is not, it's a bit of crushing to the back. Um, but overall, it's not too bad. And all these Amiga games I've picked up as well, they all work. Um, obviously, disc and manual. The actual disc and ma manual was actually cleaner than my one, so uh, I swapped them out. I mean, my ones wasn't too bad, but just these ones were a little bit whiter. Um, but eight quid that cost me. Um, I know that's easily double that, 20, 25 quid all day long. So uh, it was quite nice to get one over on uh, the eBay checkers. Um, what else did we get? I say, I've got quite a few Amigas. Uh, well, I say quite a few, eight or nine maybe, um, and some Mega Drive as well. But I'm going to try and sort of go through it, how it sort of happened in the day. Um, so who was I talking to? I was talking to Tutti UK for a bit, and because uh, we had a deal on the go, which again I'll show uh, I'll show a bit later because that didn't happen until sort of the middle of the day because I had a couple of deals sort of set up, but. As I say, with so many people there chatting, it's, it's it was hard to sort of pin everyone down. But I remember talking to Tootie, and uh, we went past um, this one trader had a, like a clearance box uh, down the side of the, down the side of the table, and uh, I picked out this one, a Space Gun, which I know uh, is quite hard to get on uh, quite a few of the. Uh, 8 and 16 bit computers, Spectrum, Spectrum especially. I mean, Mr. Bad's. I know he, I believe he's trying to get on the spectrum. It's really hard to get hold of. It's, it's not particularly desirable, I don't think, but it's one you don't really see. And where I'm trying to get all the ocean titles for the Amiga, it was quite nice to pick this one up. Um, I believe they wanted 15 quid, and I offered a tenner, and they snapped my arm off. So, uh, yeah, happy with that one. Um, and it, as I say, all the, all the Amiga games, they all work, which I'm really, really happy with. Um, what came next? i say it's all a bit of a blur and I know I'm gonna get things mixed up, but I remember I was talking to uh, Scott Brand in the middle as well, because I said I'd done a lot of uh, chatting before I, I, I got quite a few of the deals. Um, so yeah, I was definitely talking to Scott Brand at, before I got, I believe, the Mega Drive bundle. So I showed the Mega Drive bundle. I had a, I had a bit of um, cash spare anyway from a few sell, sales. So uh, what what I tried doing, I went to, because um, I, I didn't particularly think the traders were too cheap with like Super Nintendo and, and Mega Drive. Obviously they're such pop popular consoles, they all know their prices. At least with the Amiga stuff, eight, eight and 16 bit computer stuff, you'll always get, I think there's bargains to be had because these traders, they don't know their prices, I don't think. So um, let's show the, uh, the, the Mega Drive bundle I put together can't remember who it was from but the guy was brilliant really nice fella like really uh really helpful done me a, a pretty good deal again where i'm so far into it it's hard to get bundles um without getting obviously doubles and obviously if you start getting one game here one game there one game there you just pay you're paying four quid three or four quid a game postage so before you know it by 10 games you know what I mean? it's 40 quid postage so try not to do that so at these events, I, I thought, right, I'll, I'll try and get a bit of a bundle together and then I'm, I'll, I'll get a bit of money off and not pay postage. So um, first game, I, I couldn't believe I didn't have this, was Jungle Book, which looks like it might have been an ex-Blockbuster uh, video in the corner, but I'm not overly worried. It hasn't got a manual, um, but I'm pretty sure, what did I give? I think I gave about 50 quid for about one, two, three, four, five games. So pretty much work out about a tenner each which that's not really worth a tenner, I don't think, but the other thing, the other game, uh, the other games warrants it. Next up, Mr. Nuts. Um, this one, I say, some of these haven't got manuals, no, this one hasn't either. Cartridge the wrong way, but again, I know for a fact I'll be able to source manuals in my own way. Same with this one, Captain Planet. Again, another one that I couldn't believe I didn't have. Again, he had a tenner on this. But apart from, as I say, Jungle Book's probably the worst condition one out of the lot. The rest of them, I say, all, all these three have all got hang tabs. So all the boxes were quite nice on this bundle. Um, 
Next up, then we had these two are both complete. G-Lock Air Battle. Again, don't know anything about this game. Obviously being a, a bit of a flight sim. Um, I know Mr. Nuts is a side-scrolling platformer. And Captain Planet, I'm not sure if that's the same version as the Amiga. I don't think it is. I mean, the Amiga version got at a time with cartoons, classics, but I actually, cause when we got that, we didn't have that many more games. I actually got into it, it weren't that bad. And then this one I thought was a bit of a bargain, actually, Cutthroat Island, had 15 quid on it. So yeah, I believe, yeah, all five games, I think you've done me a deal, about 50 quid. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Pick that one up, hopefully I haven't broken anything. Um, sticking with Mega Drivers, so I didn't get uh, many Mega Drives. In fact, I, didn't, I picked up a few bits, but not a great deal here, really. Um, again, this one I can't believe I haven't got because it's a really cheap game. Box not in amazing condition, but it's Corporation. Again, know nothing about it, but it can't be a great game because it's such a cheap game. I mean, literally, I think I gave, I think he had a fiver each on these, yeah. Fiver on that, which again is pretty much postage. And uh, this one, Ball Jacks, which has got an awful case, but I can give it a bit of a case swap. Looks like a big old sticker's been removed from there, which is a shame because it's got the uh, hang tab in there. Again, no manual on this one. Had um, catalogue poster in, is it? Catalogue or a poster? Or both? Surprised this is in there, really. Yeah, it's a Sonic poster. Don't really know what that's doing in there. I'm sure you got that with the, uh, the Box Mega Drive. So, yeah, that was... Um, I've got one more Mega Drive, which I'll save till later, because that happened quite late. But then I remember talking to Rob, to his mate Rob. Lo absolute legend, love that guy. Even though I got his name wrong in the morning, don't know what, I was, I was literally talking to Retro Dave. He was another one that got there early. Um, and yeah, he come, he come, sort of come behind me. He was like, you all right, Steve? And I was like, you all right, Dave? I was like, twat. He's like, Rob? I was like, yeah, I know. Don't know what was going on. It was quite early as well. Obviously, I was up quite early. But yeah, I was talking to him outside and he, uh, he'd obviously gone back to his car for something. I went back to my car to obviously drop these games off and he was saying, oh, did you see uh, the Amiga games on such and such store? I was like, no, I didn't didn't see them. He, I was like, yeah, you'll have to show me them. And we sort of walked in and uh, went to, he, I couldn't half remember where it was. And then he was like, yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely this one. And uh, yeah, I put, put together a bit of a bundle on this one. And again, it was another one though, literally put a bit of a bundle together. I think it had a price on one of them, um, which, which was a bit overpriced. And I was thinking, oh gee, I'm gonna put this bundle together. He's gonna come out with something ridiculous, straight onto eBay. But anyway, I got this bundle of six games for 50 quid. And I was, I, I think I've done all right. Well, I know I've done all right. I know I've done all right. So what have we got? We've got Whizball, full, full release. On Amiga, I know I've got the uh, the budget release of this, but this is the uh, the full release. Obviously, being Ocean, got to have it. Um, Battle Command again, another Ocean title. Um, again, not in bad nick. Uh, the front of it's really nice. The back had a touch of creasing, but I'll get a I'll get a travel iron on that, and that will come up really nice. And then this, I put this in purely because of the condition. And purely because it was a top-down racer from the from the, the rear pictures, and it's got this uh, weird sticker on. I will get that off. Be a label clean, but it's in fantastic condition. And uh, I tried it yesterday, and I had no idea. I don't know what I was thinking. Obviously, it's it's uh, Activision game. It says Sega on there, but it just didn't click. It's uh, an arcade port of obviously Hot Rod, the um, four-player cab. I'll chuck a picture in. They've got one at Arcade Club. I, get, I know um, Chris Parsons. Uh, CMP absolutely loves it. Great little game. The port is, it's all right. It's, I mean, it's, it's fairly solid. Four player, simultaneous again, obviously with an adapter. But yeah, was, when I started, I was like, oh, I know this game. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. And then uh, this one here, this is the one I thought was quite expensive. He, um, he had 20 quid on this. And I was thinking, oh, it's not, uh, well, I, I personally don't think it's worth 20, but one step beyond. Again, another ocean to add to the collection and it's in it's in really nice condition to be fair so yeah happy to add that and then this last one which this was the one where obviously took it to one side looking on ebay and i, I mouthed to uh, to rob i was like yeah this is where it's going to get a bit silly but 
really lucky that it was obviously none on eBay sold listing, not the big box anyway, and I think he's just giving it to me as uh, the budget release. And it's uh, supercars. I mean, as I say, this bundle cost me, I'm sure it was 50, it was either 50 or 55, one of those. And as soon as he said 50 odd or whatever it was, I was like, yep, yeah, I'll snap this up all day long because I know for a fact this game I'll get between 35 and 40 just for this. It's in really nice condition. And uh, yeah, and it pretty much pays for the others. So again, it, uh, it's always nice to get one over the traders. I know obviously some of it, it's their, it's their, um, I mean, it makes their living, maybe puts their dinner on the table. I mean, I, d I don't know this one personally. I know he's at, been at that event quite a lot. I don't know if he does it full time, but just really annoys me. I don't know when they just go on eBay. I suppose, I mean, eBay is going rate. Right, do you know what I mean? That's what somebody's willing to pay, so that is the value. But just I just don't like that really cringy moment where they're looking and I'm like, you've got that little weight, but it is what it is. So what came next? Um... As I say, it was such a long, it was such a long day. Um, I remember, it couldn't have been long after that, maybe even before that, but Big Mike turned up with uh, Pete, old school variety face, and Mr. Bads. I felt gutted actually, because I, I literally said all right to Pete, didn't really see him the rest of the day. So yeah, a bit gutted about that. I wanted a good catch up with Pete, but that didn't happen. Um, but I had a quick little word with Mike, so I literally, caught them when I was coming in and I was writing in my car Mike had his bag with him so uh, he had a few bits for me I had a few bits for him so literally we traded them off straight away and he was nice enough to give me a lovely Robocop disc full price release um, because mine I've got the game um, but when you put it in it's a cracked copy so somebody's copied a cracked copy over the original copy which I was a bit gutted about and he also gave me uh, Shadow Warriors which I only, only wanted the discs, Mike. I don't know why you gave me the whole box. You might have been able to sell that, the, the box, but I, I had a lovely box for it, but he's given me the whole lot. Um, it's a nightmare, Mike. I said I only needed the discs, but massive, massive thanks for that, Mike. Top fella. Um, and yeah, it was really good to meet Paul, Mr. Bads. Um, to be honest, again, another one. I mean, I spent quite a bit of time with them at like, the after party, but I, again, I still don't really think I spoke to him enough. He's, I absolutely love his channel. I'm a bit of a fanboy. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it. He's got a fantastic collection. Um, even though he loves his Spectrum, which doesn't do anything for me, but I still like watching his pickups from it. I find him fascinating. I don't know, as I say, we've got very similar taste in games, I think. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite channels. And as I say, it was good to finally meet him. And he's exactly as I'd expect, like top, top fella. So, uh, yeah, so it's good to meet, meet, chat with those three. Um, even though, like, again, Big Mike, I, I caught up with him really well this time. Um, but who else was I talking to in the day? I mean, Mark, Burnt Out Culture. I was talking to him for quite a bit. I had a good catch up with him down, uh, down in the arcade area. Um, I know he had a, I had a game set aside for him. Again, I won't, won't tell you what it is. But I know he, uh, he, he really <laughs> agreed to spend his money somewhere else and I won't spoil his video, but he ended up borrowing money off, uh, off an absolute... Well, he, he never asked for it, but the, the guy... I, I let him tell the story. I let him tell the story, but he's, he's an absolute legend who uh, literally was all standing there and he literally just got his money out. He was like, yeah, you can sort me out another time. Absolute legend. Um, but what came next? Uh, Dana. Dana. Dana's the 83. I know it didn't come next, but I've sort of, I, I, I don't know where I am to be honest, but ended up getting uh, Chase HQ2 off of him. This was a bundle I know he, uh, he picked up off uh, Facebook Marketplace and I said, oh, definitely a game I want out of it. And literally I picked this up off him pretty much at closing time. And uh, I was a bit of an idiot really, because he'd it, it it held all the games back from me. He must've had about a dozen games there. He held them all back waiting for me to take my pick. And I literally didn't get to him till the end of the day. Like I'd spoke to him once and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll come back, I'll come back. And literally the day just flew. Um, so I know I've got this in the wrong order, but it's there. I'll show it. Chase HQ2, working fine. Dane Stud done me a top deal on it. Go and check his channel out. Really good channel. So in the middle of the day, um, I completely missed. And I was, I was absolutely gutted about it. Because as I say, you get chatting to people 
and I didn't look at the lineup, but um, John Hare was doing a bit of a sensible software chat, sit down chat with uh, a few others that I sort of know the names, but I wouldn't have recognised them. And uh, I actually took my Sense World Soccer game, the uh, the newest one, because I was going to get John to sign it. And uh, I completely forgot. I knew it was on the Saturday, but just, yeah, completely forgot. And uh, I was then, I was talking to James, James and uh, Colin from Let's Talk Retro. Top, top guys they are. Got a lot of time for them. And uh, Neil from Retro Man Cave was there. And I was talking to James about Neil. I was like, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind uh, having a chat with him. And James was like, oh yeah, because I know James, James and Colin know him quite well. He's like, come over, I'll, I'll introduce you. And uh, yeah, so I was talk, talking to Neil for quite a while, uh, Retro Man Cave, top, top channel, really best dressed bloke there by a million miles, like top, top channel. And uh, he's really humble as well. Because uh, I was saying to him, I was like, you must have had some sort of like presenting training or something like that. Because he's so professional the way he does what he does. Um, and he was like, no, no, he's just, he's just winging it. And I'm like, oh, no. Didn't have much to believe with the nephew. He was just so humble, or or what? But absolute top channel. Love his channel, and the uh, he gave me a few uh, a few badges, cave dweller and uh, and the old R from Retro. Love it, absolute love it. I was as I was chatting to him, and again me being absolutely thick and opening my mouth before thinking, um, I sort of asked him. I was like, Ah, oh, did you did you catch the sensible software chat? Because I know it happened at twelve, and it must have been about two o'clock by now. And he was like, oh, yeah, 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 it's rubbish, it was rubbish. And it was because Stu Cambridge was sitting right next to him, who used to work for Sensible Software, who was obviously involved in it all. And I, I, obviously, I, I wouldn't have recognised him, but I should have maybe seen his name badge. And uh, absolute top fella. Like, I was talking to him for quite a while, like, really, really nice fella. And uh, he'd done the sound on, on uh, Sensible World Soccer. And as I say, I, I said to him, I'll wait there, man. I'll, uh, John Hare had already gone, which I was a bit gutted about, but I'm, He'll probably do more chats, and I'm going to I'm going to track him down and get him to sign my game. But I had my here, uh, my sense of world of soccer with me, and uh, Stu Cambridge was nice enough to sign it for me. Um, also had they've been selling these um, fusion magazines. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really looked into it yet. It seems like a cool little uh, magazine. This is um, what what this is issue two, but it had a. Um, what did it have? It had sensible games featured in it. If I can find them. There you go. So it had uh, sensible games featured on them. And uh, Stu was really nice because I think this was his baby, Cannon Fodder. And he was nice enough to put a signature on that for me as well. Because um, when, I, when I opened the box, like literally I've got so many discs in this in this box and uh he was sort of fascinated by i think neil was as well like neil was like well, what's what's going on why have you got so many discs in there but i've got a lot of um all the demos that came out all the demo discs with sense world of soccer in it that was the uh the bulldog slighty one which uh bulldog blighty one which um you play with a grenade there's a demo on there but i've literally I've, I've obviously i've had so many bundles i've, I've had so many uh cover discs down the years but I've literally kept all the ones with uh, Sense World of Soccer on it and they were going through it and they were quite um like Stu made a joke he's like, I, I don't even own like any of these and went to put them in his back pocket but no really nice guy I had a, got a lot of time for him lovely fella and as I say it's Neil as well absolutely all you guys have probably checked his channel out absolutely brilliant channel um but who else did I talk to in the day um I was looking at the uh the some of the Amiga guys I was trying to trying to make conversation with those guys, the uh, guys that put on the um, the swag mates, Southwest, Amiga, whatever you are, um, mates, because I was sort of interested to know a little bit more about WHD load and how to upload games onto it and stuff like that. Um, and this guy was uh, was doing recapping and uh, another guy came over and I got chatting to him and uh, I was just saying about, I've got this, um, this BBC micro that had sort of it didn't catch fire, but it just started smoking. Like I didn't even see it. It was in my dad's loft, and I said, "I'll oh, get it out." Like, I'd be interested to check it out because I know, like Nintendo Alex, uh, Nintendo Arcade Alex loves his uh, BBC Micro, and uh, Pete on a retro tip, another one, another one. Actually, I saw quite early. Honestly, I'm, I know I'm going to miss people. Um, 
but yeah, I just wanted to check it out. And uh, so I said to my dad, like, get it out. And we'll, do you know what I mean? Let us know how you get on, see if it works. And he had it on for about, uh, apparently about 10, 15 minutes and it started smoking. And anyway, I was talking to this guy, as I say, with, uh, it, was, it was near the Amiga lot. And I, I got chatting to him all about it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, no, that, it'll be caps. 100% it'll be caps. He said, it's a very well-known issue. The caps don't even really do anything. That apparently it's something to do with, I'm sure he said it was something to do with like the RF signal, the caps are there to stop interference. I'm sure he said something like that. But obviously if you're not using RF, you don't need the caps. I'm sure I could be completely wrong about that, but that's what I took it. The guy was obviously really clever. And it was actually him that had all the BBC micros set up. Um, Cause I was talking about, I wouldn't mind having like a bit of an SD solution. And I, I said, I don't know anything about it. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I actually sell them. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to have one off you. I said, yeah, look, let's, go and, let's go and sort it out. You can show me it. And he's like, 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 you don't have to. And I was like, no, no, really, I want to get this BBC micro sorted and uh, try some stuff on it. And uh, he had a great, he obviously very knowledgeable, codes games as well. And then uh, I was like, oh, actually, like, like, so he was talking about Frogger. And obviously I listened to the Tenpence Arcade and Victor Marland, another one I saw, and Sean Holly. Um... They've, they've talked about him quite a few times, especially Victor Marlon talked about him on, uh, on, the, on the podcast. And it's uh, Richard Fordhurst, I think. Definitely Richard something. I knew the name straight away. I was like, yeah, I know. I've heard all about it. Obviously, I listened to the Ten Pence Arcade podcast. And yeah, really nice fella. And he, uh, he sold me the, uh, the EEPROM you need and uh, the SD solution. And uh, I've been messing around with, uh, with it today, actually, because... I was messing around with it Sunday. Before messing around with all these games, I, I, I was I was trying the uh, the BBC Micro out, and the monitor went down because we had a monitor as well that came with it, Micro VTEC Cub monitor, and literally ten minutes it started flickering a little bit and it literally collapsed before my eyes. I was gutted. Um, so yeah, I, I, as soon as that happened, I just ordered a uh, an RGB cable from eBay and put it on my, my own monitor today and was and was really checking out because I was speaking to our, uh, Alex about it and he he reeled off a few games he said check them out and honestly I'm, I'm really impressed with it there's a game called Bandit and uh, it's a bit of a clone of um, Cosmic Gorilla like because he's Alex has got the uh, the arcade of Cosmic Gorilla and I said I've actually got a bit of nostalgia for it my uncle used to love it and he's like oh if you like that check out a game called Bandit and again I'll put a bit of um uh gameplay footage on it as well because it's a great little game and there was another game as well um is it stuntman dennis or something like that dangerous i can't remember. I'll, I'll put put what it's called in there and I'll, I'll put a bit of gameplay of that great little game really good little game so yeah i uh what did i do after that um i remember seeing holster holster tv um second time i've met her like i still can't get over how small she is like, she's absolutely tiny but I know she was picking up some really nice stuff. Again, I won't spoil it for anyone that checks her channel out. But I know she uh, she picked up some really nice stuff off uh, off old Japanese Alan. Um, and so yeah, let's get on with uh, what I've got left. Um, this was the deal with Tootie. Lovely uh, Psygnosis game. Obliterator. Again, works fine too. So I'm guessing you didn't test it. But works absolutely fine. So well happy with that. Um, getting back to Chris CMP, I actually ordered this, um, he was at Alex's meet for his birthday meet and I, I gave him money for this, um, that's why I got my name on it. Um, great little game, I, I still hadn't played it but I was playing it at Revival on his, uh, on his Vectrex but that's his second game so he had Big Blue as well but he's, he's a great little coder CMP, absolutely love his stuff. Um, and what else we got left? Um, oh, this one here. It's not even Amiga, it's actually Atari ST, but this was from Roger. Roger Cantor, my good mate. Um, funnily enough, he actually had them on another stall, and when I was looking for them, I was like, these look familiar. Um, he's offered me these before, um, but I just wanted this purely for the box. The box is lovely. I've got a lovely, well, a, a horrible yellow one that I want to swap out. And again, it's another box that opens really nice. So, really happy with that. Then, what we got? My last pickup. Um, yeah, this is my last pickup. Absolute legend. Uh, again, Roger Cantor again. He had a few games in his hand um, with uh, Craig's here again. 
and uh, what like absolute legend Craig Till again. I had a lot. Of, I spent a lot of time with Craig actually. Really nice guy. I love chatting to Craig. Um, fantastic collections. Obviously thinning it down still, and uh, he sold me this lovely Double Dragon Two. Been after this for a while. There's not many Japanese exclusives. I say there's not many. I mean, I'm, I'm sure somebody was saying about how many shooters there are on the uh, on the Japanese compared to Power. I think Power had about 20 odd, and Japan had about 80 odd. I know obviously this isn't a shooter, but I love that. Uh, I do like my shooters. But obviously this didn't get a Power release. I'm pretty sure it didn't get an American release either. So uh, yeah, nice. I do like my Double Dragons. So great to get that. And I didn't pay. I won't say how much I paid, but I didn't pay 85 what he. Uh, he had on it at Doncaster, but fantastic guy, Craig. Uh, loves speaking to Craig. I know he come down with uh, with Daz Cajones Deloro, another guy. Again, I didn't speak to him very much, but from what I did, it was it was good to see Daz um, still loving his gaming. I know he's uh, opened up a new channel. I was a little bit worried about him actually, because he uh, obviously deleted his old stuff, which I was a little bit gutted about. Really, that's like his history. Like maybe he might still have him stashed, still have still have him stashed away. I, I don't know, but. Little bit, little bit gutted about that. Cause, you know I mean, he's, he, he built up that channel for a long time, but things move on. He's 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 fine with it, obviously. Because I said to him, I said like, I hope you're all, I hope you're all right. He's like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, <laughs> glad he's fine. He's top top guy. I like Daz. Got a lot of time for Daz. So uh, yeah, um, that's all my pickups. But as I say, it, it ended up going into uh, sort of after hours, like it did last year, and. Uh, you have to pay a little bit extra, and uh, obviously it all it all clears out, and all the collectors stay there, keep their cabs on, uh, all the curry and that comes out. Um, but I'm trying to think. As I say, I know uh, Pete on a retro tip went and came back. Same with Scott Brand. Um, a lot of the other lads they went out on the piss somewhere to like pubs and clubs. Obviously, because I wasn't staying the night, I, I wasn't going to get involved in all that. But I'm just trying to think if I've missed anyone out. Um, Garen, Garen, great talking to Garen as well. Absolute fantastic collection that guy's got. He's got multiple mint, sort of new old stock consoles. Uh, I, won't, I won't get into it, but when he shows me the pictures and I know um, I caught him as he was leaving and he, he, he brought a bag over with some really tasty stuff in it. I wouldn't mind doing a few deals with him if, uh, I know a few other people's got their eyes on it, so I wouldn't step on anyone's toes, but always great talking to uh, to Garen. I know he's got a channel, Retro Shmupper. Um, he doesn't do it nearly enough content. In fact, I don't think he's got barely any videos on, but I'd love to see more content from him. I know he loves his loves his shmups, his shooters. Top, top guy, Garen. Always great to uh, catch up with him. And uh, I don't think he's coming this week, so I'm going to Arcade Club this week for uh, Retro Dave's birthday. He's having uh, a few of his mates up there, so we're, me and uh, Pete are, are popping up there. So yeah, really looking forward to that. But yeah, I think that's about it. Um, if I haven't, if, if, if I remember anyone else, I'll just link them below. Oh, how can I forget? Fucking Jesus. Probably the two people I spoke to the most during the day. Dylan Craven, top guy, top lad. I know he uh, really looked after Mark that night. And uh, Eddie, roller core. Because um, literally at the end of the night, there was me, Dylan, uh, Roller Core Eddie, um, and uh, Big Mike, and and Paul, Mr. Bads as well. We was literally on a table just, just catching up about some, kind of like talking about old times. Um, and then I was chatting for, for to Alex as well at, the, at that after bit as well. So yeah, it, it was just such a great day. Absolute great day, and I can't. I'd be gutted if I if I miss anyone out, but it, it went so quick, and I was just talking to so many people, it was ridiculous. But yeah, until next time. Um, thanks for all the new subscribers. I, I I know I had about like five or ten in a week, which is quite unusual for my channel. So I don't know if somebody shouted me out. It's a massive thanks if you did. Um, but yeah, until next time, I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks. Superstar hero